Hello Internet, uh, FPS Diesel here, and this is a supplementary kind of video for a much similarly length video at this rate, probably, um, on Social Repose, aka Richard Richie Geis. Uh, this is an interview I conducted on November, what is it, uh, November 11th, 2019. Um, and I want to say that uh, interviews like this don't represent my final be all end all opinion, uh, you know, until I've done the video. You know, when you watch the video, this is my comprehensive, like, idea about what's happened and, and the information and all of that. You know, um, since this was conducted on the 11th, if more information has come out, um, you know, it'll be in the original video that really kind of catalogs all of this. Um, but otherwise, uh, have a listen. This is really for transparency and for other people to either come to their own conclusions or to back up uh, information that I have gathered. But with that being said, I haven't done a solo interview like this. Pretty serious conversation. As always, I keep things updated on my social media channels, so... When this is out, uh, obviously I'll be on social media channels and always check the pinned comment um, because I might have an update there or something else related to that. Uh, so with that out of the way, uh, here is the interview with Social Repose. All right, so I just want you to know that I'm recording now. Okay. Okay, so recently there's been a bit of like a drama that's come up with you um, now for those of you in my audience that do not or have not seen the previous video um, I criticized social repose for a couple of different things uh, regarding how he was talking about former creators um, but uh, I, I think first of all because uh, if I do the video on this this will be covered before this um, yeah. First of all, I I, I want to ask like this individual. So you were dating them, right? Yeah, we did. We did for about three months total. Okay, so you you guys dated for three months, and now I know what happened, right? Based off of what she had posted, right? Right. And so you cheated again what exactly is the thing that happened from your perspective well i'm not going to uh pretend that like i'm in the right in this situation but uh the core of the relationship and i know <laughs> she's gonna know that i'm gonna say this but it's like the the core of it um originally like i haven't dated anyone since jacqueline which has been over two years now i think so um until this girl, I, I met her and we started talking for a couple of months and then we decided to date. But uh, on the foundation, when we had the sit down talk of normally when you decide to date somebody, you, you know, you sit down and discuss what the relationship is. Um, and we decided to go for a more open relationship, uh, mainly because she's a sex worker, which is totally fine. Um, and I have a very not great past with uh, monogamy. So uh, we decided to do an open thing, um, but we didn't. We didn't really draw out the, the rules. As, uh, we we could have been more specific about it, um, but we we, we uh, went through the motions a few times. It didn't go amazing. Uh, I don't want to get into the details because that's gross. Um, and uh, pretty much by when uh, the the third month that we started dating, we were on tour, and uh, we both knew it wasn't. It wasn't working and we were fighting a lot and uh i you know that I, right, right after tour ended we had another incident and uh that broke the camel's back so you say you guys were in an open relationship uh but in her post she says that uh richie guys aka social repose is still cheating on his girlfriends um so is it i i think i think it's very interesting that it's like yeah, I'm not going to pretend like it was a 100% like, you fuck anyone you want, I fuck anyone I want. Um, but that was the core of it. Uh, I was definitely sneaky in the end, which was shitty. But at the same time, 
there was intent to like I, I didn't want to be in a monogamous relationship I just knew I knew it's such a horrible idea um, but then a couple months in she started getting very insecure when we had a few instances of like exercising open relationships and um, you know it it got really messy and uh, you know about a month later we ended up breaking up because of it now there's like there's like this 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 consistent like issue that I see levied against you is that you are someone who is a serial cheater, you know. Uh, so, in reference to those past relationships, those were monogamous. Like this is a committed relationship, and you made like a conscientious decision to cheat in those prior relationships. Is that correct? Uh, with Jacqueline, yeah, I I. Uh... I fucked up pretty bad on that that was yep <laughs> like but but at the same time i um jacqueline and i dated for a year and uh yeah i fucked that one up real good whereas what what, what was it you wanted me to admit to that i mean i don't know i feel like all this is pretty public knowledge <laughs> Well, you know, a lot of it's said through, like, either the grapevine or it just becomes a lot of, like, oh, back and yeah. forth. Oh, well, yeah. I think, I think it's pretty public knowledge that I cheated on Jacqueline and that um, I deserved pretty much, like, most of what I got, you know, still reaping, reaping the, yeah. Uh, no, I did. I fucked that one up pretty good. Um, and I haven't dated anyone since, except for this one, which is now coming up, which we are talking about now. Now, okay, so I, I, I'm I'm looking at the post right now, and I'm 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 reading through it again. Um, if based on her like post, um, you know, this is considered cheating, and th there's an angle to it. Like, why are you getting into? what other people are perceiving as monogamous relationships but you, like in this case you're saying it's not you know well it generally when when you decide to date somebody you sit down with them and she'll confirm this obviously we'll we'll have different like kind of spins on it but if she says that we went into this with uh, being a monogamous relationship that's not true um because i knew that it wouldn't work in monogamy and, and it's not saying like you know and like nobody can keep it in their pants or whatever it's just i know that that's not something that i want right now and neither did she she did not she was very um i wouldn't say gung-ho about it but you know it just seemed like the right path to take until i started exercising it and it didn't go like we planned and then you know later down the line i think right when we were breaking up she was like you know you wouldn't let me sleep with guys i'm like that that's not you never asked and she's like you wouldn't have let me and i'm like you never asked i would have like if you let me sleep with girls and i'll let you sleep with you know like, did how, did how you works. ask her to sleep with other women yeah i did you did yeah um now there's a another part in it um that has to do with like body self-esteem and mm -hmm. all of that uh was there anything you're doing based off of your recollection that could be considered or like would hurt someone's self-esteem based on like who you were going to see this is what happens in at least my past two relationships and this is going to be probably tmi um but you know what it, it's like two years ago i got everything said ever so maybe it's not um the, re the reason Roy brought that up because I've never openly or directly even with Jacqueline, even with Ayala, all those people, I would never directly like look at them and say like you're ugly or you're, because all these women are really, they're beautiful I wouldn't have dated them, you know, well I mean okay that's shallow, but like you know, they're really pretty, uh, so that's that's not like, so when people say that I am body shamey with my girlfriends um, the root of this and it started with Jacqueline, and I had the same issue with, with this person, is that a few months in, um, obviously it happened a lot quicker with this person, um, just because it was kind of a more bursty relationship. But uh, it, 
like you you sleep you know when when you're in a relationship with, with somebody you sleep with them and then i get bored and i don't want to sleep with them and it's not saying they're unattractive or they're not there's nothing there's anything wrong with them i just personally stop being attracted to them and it sucks because you want to be attracted to your partner and you want to have a healthy relationship but um that's kind of when things start to fall apart and uh i know that that doesn't justify the morality of my uh you know me straying and me cheating because it 100 percent doesn't like it's shitty um but it always starts with me not being as attracted to them and then they take that like i'm calling them ugly when you know they're not if you weren't feeling as attracted to them why didn't you cut it off yeah i sh- because uh because i'm a i can be a coward sometimes but also um with the jacqueline one i was 100 percent coward. i can say that um that's why that like i kind of i don't refute that anymore that you know like I know she said in the post that like I talked poorly of Jacqueline, but I kind of didn't. Um, that I don't want to go on tan- tension on that. Um, what, what, what was the original, original question? Um, I was really like uh, originally I was asking about like uh, the body image issues that um, have kind of been levied against you. But what what was the what was the most recent thing? Um, why did you stay with them if you weren't feeling attracted? Uh, because it's kind of like one of those things where, um, I hadn't, uh, at least with Roy, it really started to rev up and I hadn't really done much. I hadn't, you know, been sneaky or anything, uh, leading up to tour, which is, you know, it was a month long tour and we broke up, I think three or four days after, right after that tour. But I brought her on as a merch girl because, uh, not because she's a girlfriend, because we know better, not, not because you sleep with a lot of people on the tour, but just because it's business and when you bring people you're romantically involved with that mm, generally doesn't work out very well but uh she was super into merch slinging it says in her bio she's super into being a roadie like she has a lot of friends in bigger bands that um this is kind of like the vague career that she wants is for shows and to work with bands uh so she wanted to do merch for me uh for not a lot but she really wanted it was kind of like her training wheels i mean she said you know we called it a stepping stone tour for her because that's what it is because my tours are bullshit um but uh you know like all the all the shit started going down while we were on tour and we had this big conversation about halfway through the tour it was actually in my friend's house and she was just uh, like i i didn't want to sleep with her and i was tired uh because tour is hard and we had this big blowout fight and you know it kind of came to this crux of like why why are why are, why are we doing this and i'm like i just i want to sleep because we have a show tomorrow and uh you know i could have broken up with her which was two weeks before we broke up but you know she would have left the tour it would have been a whole whirlwind of uh drama surrounding this you know we still had 10 or 11 dates left and yeah, that was pretty much the reason why that it didn't end like right away there because we were on the road across the country and it sounds shitty, but that's kind of why. So uh, let me try and get like a grasp on the timeline here. So you didn't sleep with anybody else while you were on the tour, correct? Not directly, no. What does that mean? Uh, yeah, no, I did, I, I fooled around with somebody, and it was, oh, really, yeah, I regret it, it was bad, it was a dumb idea, but, uh, you know. Now, going into this, right, I, I, I'm listening to you, and, you know, I'm, I'm taking it in, and, you know, here's the thing, how do I know that I can trust what you're saying right like this is something like this happened then or this happened here and whatnot well you can't i don't i mean i don't know what you i don't know if you want me to like there's no i mean this is we were on tour like i I mean unless you want like specific instances on things but you know i'm just saying how i saw it happen and through my lens 
I mean, if you if you if you if you want to question like certain direct events, I can try and talk more about them if that's what you want. Uh, I, I'm certain things will come up as we continue to go through this. Um, sure. You know, there's been whisperings and like different and, and and you know there are things that i have seen personally and then there's like things that i don't have direct evidence for uh just yet uh but there's a lot of like say about how you're handling your patreon or like your relationship with fans and you know the professionalism and personal that that's one thing but like what is it that you're delivering on in this patreon right that's there are people who are getting very upset that you are not meeting the requirements you set for yourself in patreon well there's only one thing that i offer on uh at least in that's tangible on the patreon um and that's a skype video call and i i think i've been pretty good with getting those done and if i'm not then you know it's it's mainly on the top tier which is i think five or six slots um i offer a skype call once a month and you know it's like 30 minutes and we kind of just catch up on life and stuff and they're you know they're pretty pleasant i don't mind doing them uh sometimes they fall behind like on the tour month which was last month um but you know i i, I generally i've never not made it up to people and that's the only thing that I offer. The rest is generally just update videos, updates on uh, music, and, you know, what people generally... Like, my, my Patreon is not for, like, selling merch and for, like, giving stuff away. I It's more for, like, hey, if you... I mean, you know, Patreon, it's to uh, to help me do things. And uh, if someone wants to throw me 50 bucks, you know, the highest tier a month, then the least I could do is give them, you know, 30 minutes to an hour of my time. Now, moving back to your relationships, because it's what people are gonna. I I think it's what people are are most curious about. It's gonna get the clicks. But here's the thing, right? Is when your relationships end in you know these kind of public ways, are. Is there a part of that for you that like you feel like it, it, it improves your art or like it has an impact on that or what is the relationship between well your relationships and the art the music that you make well that's a that's a question um with the last record which i know you talked about in the last video uh, that was the entire theme of that record was toxic relationships um i wrote it before i even met jacqueline um you know, because I just thought that that whole theme was very interesting. And obviously, I've been through my fair share of toxic relationships. So, I, yeah, I wrote a whole EP about it. Um, as far as it affecting my art now, um, no. As, like, to like to make my art better or worse based on breakups, uh, at least the next record I am already finished with, it doesn't really... It's That's not really the theme of it, but... Um, I mean, obviously, people write about breakups, but I'm not going to say that th these breakups have done more or, more or less for my career. If anything, they've pretty much broken me at this point. So, uh, yeah, no, if, if you're like, I know a lot of people insinuate that uh, I have breakups or have really messy relationships or even purposefully, you know, ruin things um, to make me sad and to make better art. But uh that's not the case it's just not um yeah sorry no i th i think the, uh, the the correlation between me being a shitty boyfriend and me trying to be a better artist um isn't really a thing and um i got to ask right when we're talking about your fans, especially the very loyal fan base for you. Um, you know, what is your feelings about them, right? And I understand it's like, why would you get on the mic and say shitty things about your fans? 
but what is your genuine naked perception? And I'm, I'm just, you know, just for clarification, you could just say whatever you want, but. Well, we're, we're being recorded here, but I do want to be transparent because gen- like genuinely it's like, Okay, I have a lot of feelings on this because one, I've been doing this for half a decade professionally with well, for quote unquote professionally. Um, as, as far as like having super fans and having, you know, because every creator that um, has a fan base knows at least any, any amount of fans, you know, if you're more than 100 fans, you'll know that you kind of develop like an inner circle and people that like are really into your stuff. You know, they really resonate with your stuff. Um, you know, and people like a, like a Markiplier or PewDiePie have hundreds of thousands of those people. Um, and I have about a dozen. So, or, or maybe more, maybe less. It, just, it fluctuates, but you have these, um, I don't like calling them super fans because I feel like that's demeaning. But just really like people that are really, really into you. And it's, it's, it strikes a very weird relationship because, you know, they really want to get to know you. They're very invested in your decisions and your life. And when they, and, and so pretty much they, they do their best. And I would say, you know, 90% of them are very well intentioned and they won't, you know, breach your privacy or uh, make things weird. Um, but, but while still supporting you, but then there's always um, the types that, you know, go into it, um, essentially pay, trying to pay for your attention and paying for, uh, your affection with or paying for your attention expecting affection and when that doesn't end up panning out um you know people get really mad and people uh get really spiteful and i don't know i've had it happen a handful of times um over my career as a youtuber quote unquote career um and it's like as much as I keep telling myself that like okay like I'll I'll learn from this situation but it always happens differently where like somebody gets really hurt because either you know like for instance um, the the ang- one of the angriest people against me in that little anti group right now is primarily mad because I left her on red a few times and maybe one of the months I was really late on her Skype call and she blew up and is now being really really mad um and i understand like the frustration of uh not getting what you want reciprocated to somebody that you're you're very invested in um but ultimately i like my my whole idea of fandoms like i really don't like the idea of being like the leader of a thing i just want to make music i just want to do art things or what you know whatever like youtube bullshit um, I really don't like the idea of being kind of like a semi cult leader in a way, cause that's kind of what fandoms are. And, you know, you kind of get dragged into this cause you have to pay your rent, but I really don't like the idea of being put on a pedestal because it always ends up being really messy and it's kind of never really what I want. But, you know, like I said, push comes to shove. You need to be able to keep uh, the lights on if you want to do it professionally. And so I just want to get a part-time job. So, do you think a fan getting angry like that is justified? Well, I understand why. Um, is it justified as a completely different angle, I guess. Um, personally, I think it's a really difficult situation because gener- generally speaking, um, the people that are really invested in you, um, whether well-intentioned or not, um, are filling a void within themselves of like you know like a person that falls in love with a youtuber you know like a, an online personality somebody that just rants and whatever and makes content um a person that gets really attached to that one somebody they've never really met or don't truly know um is clearly looking for something or clearly trying to fill some void in, in their life whether it be debilitating or not um sorry i forgot the question <laughs> Um, I'm asking you if it's justified for that fan to be upset. I think I understand their feelings, but also I think super fans like that need to understand, um, like need to need to figure out, need to ask why they're following the person. Is it because they want to sleep with them? Is it because they want attention? Or is it because they want to see more videos from them or more music from them? Um, and I think that would 
So I think it's a it's a fan, it's a case by case basis. I think. Now, in the post, it says that you're nice to these fans, right? Because it it, it pays your bills, right? Not, you know, you even say yourself you don't want to be like this kind of leader. Um, so would you say that that is accurate? Yes or no? Well, it's not a yes or no. I mean, I can explain it. Elaborate. Say, yeah, no, I would say that uh, while I think the core purpose of a Patreon, the core purpose of the supporters is that they have decided that they are resonate way more with my stuff. And I'm not you know, just uh, like they like what I do way more than the casual viewer that just drops by for a video once a month. And they want to see more of that, so they give me their money. Um, and I, I use all of that money to make music and music video. Like, I don't spend my money on anything else except for music, like, the, you know, back into the channel or back into the art stuff. Um, so th that's kind of what they've decided to do. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> now, it goes on to say right um talking about your relationship with other people um how do you feel about other youtubers that are more they they hop on different trends right they're more based around hand, like uh trend hopping or doing different things that, that, that whole paragraph in the thing really like that hurt my feelings um it's like he feels like he's no better with the trends and i am under no delusion that I make a lot of not great content. Um, you, you know, I, I think um, she she would say something like that simply because um, I don't. We've only dated for three months, and she hasn't really seen when I get really really invested into a project like Empress, which I think you've seen all those videos. That was a whole thing, and like you know, while it may, it might not be the best. Stuff, but like to me that was like my favorite work I've ever done and I don't think that's YouTube bullshit I think I like really really tried and put a lot of money and effort into it um, whether people thought it was good or not is subjective but I love that's why I do YouTube is for those projects it's like the really in-depth ones where I can really throw myself at and I think that's more than just um, channels i mean i don't think there's anything wrong with chasing trends and you know making that money because there is money in YouTube. there still is um but as far as only doing that and trying to not strive for something better outside of that like i try and pay my bills as well by doing trendy bullshit like and sometimes it works a lot of the times it doesn't but sometimes it does um and it's the sad reality that um you know, my music doesn't, my music alone doesn't pay the bills. It just doesn't. It's not popular enough. I, I can't say it's not good enough because like I said, like subjective, but, uh, it, it doesn't sell enough. So I have to make these videos. Um, so for her to say that I'm shitting on other YouTubers for trendy bullshit when I do the same thing. Well, yeah, I do do the same thing. And while I just, I, when I see people only do that and not strive to like make anything original, that kind of. I don't, you know, you, you want to see people make cool shit and not just the same, what, you know, react, like, like I do reaction videos. I'm not proud of them, but there are channels that only do reaction videos and only do that and pretend like, and act like they're hot shit and act like they're, you know, the, they, they deserve their like five, 10, whatever million uh, subscribers. And it's just like, you know, but who am I to say that they deserve it? But at the same time, I look at that as somebody who you know spends fifty thousand dollars on a record and trying to make it work and you know yeah sometimes you get a little jealous or you know you say some offbeat comments now i i i, I understand you say that that paragraph is hurtful but just let's recognize where she's coming from because i i, I know when i play this interview people are gonna say oh the diesel didn't go hard enough on, on Richie. I, I just want to say that yeah. it, it is perfectly fine for her to hurt your feelings. I I, oh, I think that no. is perfectly fine. No, no, no. I'm not saying she shouldn't do. She can do whatever the fuck she wants, man. Like that. This is her prerogative. I don't want to be in any of this because you know, it, it, <laughs> obviously. Um, but when I'm reading, like of all of 
a handful of things, you know, because it's a very long, scathing thing. Um, but I remember, you know, there's two or three things in there that popped out where I'm like, hey, man, like, I get you don't like me, but we dated. Like, you liked me at one point. And, like, she never said any of this stuff when we were dating. And then we break up and all this stuff. And I'm like, okay, I, like, I get, I get some of it. But some of it when she, like, really goes for the throat of, like, my passion and, like, what I do. And outside of me being a boyfriend, then I'm like... Ah. Well, you, you gotta understand. According to what she said, you you, you cheated on her. Like, <laughs> you know. I... Yeah, but I don't. I don't think it was that like cut and dry as the Jacqueline thing is. <sighs> Richie, is this like, is this cheating thing gonna be something that continues for the rest of your career you know it's like a couple months ago we saw what happened with like pro jared you know it, it, it's like we don't need more creators ending up in that position like what what's going on here like what are you saying to yourself and is this something you're just saying to yourself for the time being or or is oh, there going to no. be actual change well the whole idea was that one uh i didn't date anyone for a long time uh because of this like i'm not gonna kid myself it's like um i just like yeah i knew you know i knew that after that whole situation and how public it was and how much i incorporated jacqueline into the channel and then how i like was like wow that was yeah that was pretty shitty um so i did so i didn't date anyone i mean obviously like i've been with girls since then but um I've always been very forward with everyone about how it's, you know, it's casual. I'm not looking for that. And then this girl came along and uh, we kind of took a chance on that. And uh, after not a very long amount of time, you know, I'd proven that it's like, all right, well, um, we kind of started with an open thing and then it didn't, it kind of got messy and then it fell apart in kind of a very similar but really, really sped up fashion. So, yeah, I mean, maybe it'll be continued narrative. I just, I don't, like, I consciously just try and stick with, like, covers and stuff now just because I know people, uh, you know, they don't like my personality very much, and that's fine. It, 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 it's just, like, I recognize that that kind of content and putting myself out there like that, um, especially since I'm just not the best with relationships and that's you know i keep showing it it's like all right well if people want to hear me sing and do all that stuff that's awesome and uh the rest is uh just not available i guess but now it's trying to be available R richie it's not that people don't like your personality it's that from the outside looking in you know i i, I cover a lot of bullshit on the internet you know it's yeah. just like people are just like tired of you getting into bullshit that that's it you know and and it's like you don't include roy in the channel but then you bring her on tour for work you know it's like you want to keep this separate separation but i know that was stupid like it, trust me we had a, we had a lot of conversations about this before the tour about how i'm like you know we, i i knew that it was it, it was potentially a misstep um but you know she she does i'm, I'm not gonna say the other band she works for but like she does bigger gig bigger gigs that are dwarf my whole thing my whole career you know like she works with really big artists and she talked to me about how terrified she was of fucking up those gigs she didn't want to burn those bridges so she kind of wanted to use my tour as like a training wheel you know to to, to prove that she can do this to herself which you know she said point blank and it's like so i don't, it just kind of like in that from that perspective it made sense to where i'm like okay like you know i'm i'm with you right now this makes sense i'm going on this tour you know there's no more than you know 50 to 60 kids a show it's not like it's overwhelming so it'd be a really good opportunity for her to to kind of develop her merch and roadie chops um but it's not like i love you know mixing business with relationships so 
you were could like more or less convinced to bring her on is what I'm getting at here. Well, or... I mean, it, I, I don't know if I was convinced. It was a group like we we talked about it because I was worried. I'm like, uh, you know, like I never posted about her. I never put her in videos. It, it just it's not that's not the type of stuff I want to put out there through my like vein. Um, but at the same time, like it just made sense. She really wanted to, to help me with with the pre tour and the packing. She she wanted, you know, it was like practically like I don't want to say a resume builder, but like that's kind of what it was, you know. I mean, I paid her some, and and Johnny Gilbert paid her some, so you know, and, and I paid for all her food and lodging and stuff. Um, but ultimately, it, it wasn't it wasn't a for profit thing for her. Like she really wanted to like kind of prove her worth in the merch game. Mm. Uh, was she the only person working merch or yeah it's a small tour okay generally I have, I have a tour manager my drummer and her we all were in one band like it's not yeah <laughs> okay so generally speaking talking about the the business in this regard then it's like how does payment work for those type of like you know working a merch table and doing things like that is is this uh going to be alluding to me not paying her enough yes okay so let's talk about that um so pretty much everyone on the tour there were five of us um me johnny gilbert who is his own act uh we have skyler who's my drummer but also he is also a solo artist called secret tree fort he o he opened the tour um, essentially, I didn't pay him as a drummer with the deal that he gets to open for the tour and sell merch. I thought that was a pretty fair deal, um, and he agreed. And he, you know, we're pretty much best friends. Um, we had Trevor, who's a tour manager, who is Roy's friend, who did a phenomenal job. You know, I never would never have anything bad to say about him. I paid him a thousand dollars. Well, I paid him eight hundred. Johnny paid him two hundred, uh, which I thought was totally fair for uh, a tour that was. I also paid for his hotel and food for a tour that was slightly under three weeks um while not a ton of money i think for a pretty low budget tour um i thought that was pretty fair and roy ended up getting paid 500 um just because tour managing it the duties in it are an an, an avalanche of, of responsibility whereas merch is just merch um but also roy but i would also pay for all roy's stuff so she wouldn't lose money but it it, it, it just comes down to uh when people complain about how much they're being paid. Um, I never pressured Roy to be on this tour. I gave her all of my concerns on what could potentially arise and how mixing business, because, you know, I do, I can get a little tyrannical on tour. I've gotten a lot better at it because I've been on, I think, five tours now, and this was definitely the best one. Um, but I just, I don't like, like if someone, if someone isn't doing their job or if someone's messing up or, you know, we need to be, a, a, you know, a fine a tuned machine in order to, you know, just make the shows as good as possible. And uh, if someone is not cooperating or just being really difficult, uh, which happens because you're all living together, then it becomes like a boss employee relationship. And that gets really ugly. And I don't want to do that to people that I care, that I, you know, them in romantically invested in so that was the biggest concern um but as far as money goes and contracts um you agree to what you're being paid months before the tour even happens um you know you can negotiate that it goes through management as, as well um if someone and then after if, and then they do the tour and then after the fact they're like well i wasn't paid enough you should have said that um before we went on the tour it's just it's business stuff like i did i wasn't trying to fuck anyone over i think I, everyone was paid adequately and i also covered all their expenses did anybody else have any quarrels about like how much they were paid or nope no it was just me no it was just raw it, it was just her and her friend trevor and i guarantee you trevor had a to, from what i've seen um he had a great time and you know i think i you know i paid him promptly right after the tour just like i did roy um, I, we had a contract in place before the tour. I met all the requirements, we paid for all their stuff. Like, you know, there wasn't any discrepancies in that way. Um, I think when Roy comes at me for saying I didn't pay her enough and I didn't, and I took advantage of her, um, she might be referring to the pre-tour, which we probably spent dozens of hours folding and organizing shirts and merchandise. Cause I have a lot of merchandise, too much merchandise. Um, and 
she took it on herself to do it. I never, yeah, like I, I never pushed her or, or even really asked her to do it. Like I was going to do it. I do it every tour. It sucks. But she was like, no, I got this. This is going to be like my thing. I need to like get good at this. Um, so, you know, she sat in my living room for a few weeks and just did it. And I helped some, but she honestly didn't really like me helping because she wanted to know where everything was. Um, now that's been translated to me taking advantage of her time, but should I have stopped her? Well, what I want to know is, you know, like, are you paying the people that you work with like enough? Is it like an adequate amount that you're paying them? Uh, for example, when we're talking about like past projects, is it that you're working with people who are like friends, like a friend who's a director or a cinematographer to pull off those music videos or those like music videos cost $11,000 a pop. And I pay all my, my production company. I pay $4,500 a day to shoot them. So if people come at me for saying I don't pay people adequately, I would beg to differ on that front because I pay a lot of money. I pay all the people that I commission. Um, there are always contracts involved because I know better because, you know, people people will come out and be – I mean, it doesn't happen often with art stuff because I'm, rel I'm pretty diligent with how and who I pay um, because it's always discussed it beforehand. And if a fan provides – because um, I think there's been one disgruntled fan over the years, which I've heard. She's not a fan of mine anymore, but for various reasons. But she provided a print that I still use on some of my shirts. Um, and she drew it up for me, and we talked about it. And she said I could She said I could have it, and that I could use it. And she gave me permission via DM that I can use it on merch, and that's fine. But then, you know, years down the line, since I'm not a very big creator, I have the same merch. You know, I don't change out merch that often. I, you know, once I get a shirt, I'll have it for two or three years. Um, now she doesn't like me. Um, or she just, I don't even say she doesn't like me. She's just not, she's not into it anymore. Now she's, she's going around telling people, oh, he didn't even pay me. And I'm like, well, this was years ago. And you offered the, like, you, you gave me the design. It was fan art. And I said, hey, can I use this for a shirt? And you said, absolutely. So does that mean I have to pay her? Like, that's the one, the one instance where I could, I could see somebody, you know, trying to say that I didn't pay people. But in general, I'm very diligent about paying people and being very transparent. Like, I don't tell someone I'm going to pay someone and then pay them less. That's never happened. Okay, so pivoting back to, you know, the the cheating thing again. And it's like, so you hooked up with somebody while you were on a tour, correct? Yeah. Yeah. This was the person at the show? It was somebody. I don't really want to talk about, like, you know, who, like, you know, that. It, but yeah, it did. Uh, so this is somebody at the show basically that was there at the show to see well it was also a friend of mine you know like okay. I knew the per I knew the person okay alright I think for now considering it's been about 41 minutes uh, that's enough questions um, if I have anything, I'll follow up with you, uh, yeah. regarding anything, if I come across anything, um, you know, I, I, I wanted to give you a chance to say your piece, what I do with this right now, I don't know, um, but when the time comes, the time will come, obviously I have a lot of, uh, research to do. Uh, yeah, just un understand that it's, um, the current thing, I mean, I, I understand, like, why Roy would be mad, obviously, but everything else surrounding it, and all the other stuff, um, that's been a really difficult thing to kind of wrap myself around, and like, you know, all, all my core base is kind of, you know, as you've seen, you're, I think you're, you're dating Gula Ghoul, who's been a longtime supporter of mine, who is not now, um, and, you know, everyone's just kind of banding together and kind of drumming, kind of revving each other up 
it's turning into this thing where it's like i don't i don't think like yeah i'm being called this like manipulative monster and for all these different reasons for all these fans kind of banding together and i'm looking at this and i'm like i don't I don't know. It's just, I feel like everyone's revving each other up because the individual reasons as to why someone, um, I understand that why they would stop, decide to stop supporting me, but to actively like try and tear me a new one. Um, a lot of it just has to do with, you know, they wanted more attention or, you know, said I took their money, which is that one, which you brought up in the last video. She's still a thing. Um, you know, it's it's. I think it's a little more nuanced than that. I I, I think people are, are are pissed for a number of different reasons. I, I don't think a lot of it. Of course, obviously, you know, I, I've covered Stan culture multiple times. I, I I've written about it. You know, those are things that I find very uh, interesting. But you know, I, I look at why people are frustrated and upset and. and you gotta understand, you know, some of these people have been, you know, long time followers and they're upset about, you know, how things are being handled or, you know, just what's going on. And I don't think like a lot of that is unjustified. I, I think a lot of it might have to do with the Patreon and, you know, this is kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. People don't want to see the person they support constantly fuck up because it starts to piss them off because they invest money assuming, you know, they're going to do better this time or they're going to improve, you know. It's like you don't want to run out of people's goodwill, you know. It's like you look at Onision, his entire okay. fan base yeah. has ran out of goodwill. You know, you don't want well, that to but... happen. But here, here's the inverse to that, is that I've done my absolute best to to a pretty good degree until now um, of, keep it, of keeping my personal life, not even just relationship, but just in general. Like, after that, I was like, all right, I'm good. Um, you know, and I, I, I do, I want people to follow me because they like the videos, because they like the music, and because they like whatever the fuck that is. Um, obviously, the super fans want to get in further, and they want your, they want your, you know, naturally they'll they'll want the you know, stand culture. They'll want your personal life, um, but ultimately, I I want at least my intention, which I'm clearly failing at currently, is to have anyone that wants to support me to support me for what I you know what I make. I will say this: I understand it's it's difficult to manage how much of your life you share with the audience and you know maintaining that professional relationship you know and and being appropriate about it you know i'm not trying to knock your business but you know i don't think it would be bad to sit down and have like a long like reevaluation about what that is you know and like what are your boundaries and rules and it's like well i mean right now it's nothing. I mean, the, the only reason why this is being addressed is because it's it's being brought up by a third by a third party, which is you know, like I'm coming at this because I just know it's like, all right, well, it's been going all long enough, and enough um, big supporters have kind of joined that side. So I'm like, all right, well, this deserves attention now. So here we are. How do you think you're gonna handle this moving forward? Well, I've been trying. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm not. I don't. I don't. I legitimately think uh, I'm not like dating wise because this was this was my first foray back into dating, and as you can see, it uh, went very poorly. Um, I, I I think it's just. Yeah, I think I might be. It, it's it's so easy to say you'll be alone forever, um, and that's fine. It, it's just I understand that like, and I you know get not shit on just uh like i take youtube or i take music or i take art very seriously and clearly anytime i try and attempt to be like oh maybe i can have a girlfriend or maybe i can have something more than just you know a hookup or whatever um it it doesn't work and i fuck it up so it's important to recognize that and just be like all right well 
this is my first time back in the dating game and it failed miserably so maybe i should um focus on things that you know music and so that's how you're gonna handle the relationships but like how are you going to you know i know this is like very sudden and it's a lot of business stuff to think about you know but how are you gonna handle like the channel the patreon or what are things like you're mulling over in your mind right now about that well the channel i have no idea what i'm doing it's pretty obvious i'm, I'm just literally just making content at this point and you know some gets views some very don't and it's just i mean i've been i i'm actually pretty happy with how i've managed the channel in the past two years um since the scandal um you know and the, arguably I, I never really recovered from uh numbers wise obviously um you know, I, I've been doing music and non-personal stuff um, regard, just because I'm, it's not even past, it past the scandal stuff, just in general. Like, my life is generally relatively insane. Um, and a lot of things I know that, like, you know, I don't like ranting on live streams and getting in trouble. I'm just, it's not worth it. And I'm just not interested in that. Um, so I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how I've made the channel the last two years. It's been pretty clean as far as, like, horrendous dramas uh now as personally i mean you know i'm learning once again that like even after you know three month relationship it's like all right well that didn't go well so i guess yeah just stay stay single for a while longer you know i'm sure that's what everyone kind of wants to hear that like i'll just chop my dick off but you know it's R richie it's real, though. I, I think people just want you not to stick your dick where it doesn't belong <laughs> yeah but also i just shouldn't date like that's the core of it is that like i shouldn't be with people or romantically like that, so you know you don't trust yourself to be monogamous is what i'm it's hearing. not even that it's more like i'm when i'm in these relationships i'm not all there i'm not fully invested so like that's what you know people will call me a sociopath and all these things and i you know i i kind of see it be, just because it's like when i'm in it it's like generally when you date somebody like you should date like you should be re you should be in it you should i mean i'm not saying love them but like you should i mean although i i have no say in this ring because i am not good at dating but it's just in general like i always have kind of one foot out and that's my problem and you, that's not a good way to date because a lot of people's feelings get hurt richie are, are you still upset about what happened with jacqueline about the actual incident? No. It was a long time ago. I'm um I'm upset that I like kind of fucked everything up. That's I think that's the biggest uh as is in general, like with my like whole you know, like I said, I never really numbers wise, I never really covered with fans. I never Yeah, I just like that was kind of the bullet. And it was just like you know, it's really easy to just be bitter and be like, Ugh, like, you know, Jacqueline ruined my life. But like she did. Well, she came in hot. You know, she she laid it on thick. But did I deserve it? I mean, from how I conducted myself, probably. Yeah. Um, you know, so like it hurts. Uh, it hurts in the way that like I felt like I had such a promising, you know, I had like record labels talking to me like that. And then when that happened, it all disappeared. And it was just like, OK, well. Um, I fucked that up and I'll never get it back. And that's just something that I'll have to live with. And, uh, you know, yeah, I don't deserve much. You know, I, I it's like, I'm not going to give you pity because this is no. something you did. You know, it, I don't, it happened. I don't like, but everyone calls me like, I'm always playing the victim. I'm like, dude, I, I'm not... <laughs> It's like I don't know. It's not even that. What do I have to say? Because that's not it. I don't have to say anything. It's just I know what I did. I've acknowledged it. I took a wild beating for it. Jacqueline emotionally took a wild beating for it. You know, the whole situation was horrendous. And it's like even two years later, we're still, you know, that's still a talking point and everything because it was just ugly. And it's just like, yeah, it. it it kind of ruined me and that, you know, but I dug my own grave. So, you know, there's not much to say. 
I when I hear you know you talk about it it just sounds you know like you're very like it just happened like it, it, i understand in the grand scheme of like you know your life you know it, it did just happen but in terms of internet time that, that sounds like a, like two years sounds like a oh, long time man. ago it's, you so know 2017 was a lifetime ago but uh people here and i you know i guess we're still on record but it doesn't matter because you're not going to use this but uh it it's so interesting because over two years, and this is going to be TMI, but it's not gross, uh, dating people as a like damaged, tarnished reputation YouTuber is such an interesting thing because everyone knows what I did and they know, and they know how I conducted myself. And I don't try and play that up where like, oh, it was her fault and she's just a crazy girl. Because I know like I was the bad one in this. So, but they still, they'll still want to be with you and like see the good in you. And it's just like, you know, and, and obviously I want to see the good in myself. Like, you know, I don't think of myself as a horrible, horribly awful person. I think I make a lot of really dumb, stupid decisions. Uh, but as far as like the dating game goes, it's like they get to see everything. So like every relationship since Jacqueline has been centered around Jacqueline and like that and like I try my best to not you know like yeah okay you know my past but like let's let's develop something between us but it always ends up kind of the last few girls have been interested in but haven't dated uh it's always that's always been like a really hot topic in everything as it, I mean as it should be because it's one giant red flag but it's like the reason why I say like oh it, it seems like it just happened is because everybody always wants to talk about it forever i i i can't imagine how you go back into relationships and that not be a talking point I so I, I get it, it, it <laughs> but you know it's a I don't, I, I, I genuinely had thoughts where I'm like, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to have like a real relationship. You know, like I said, partially that's my fault because I didn't treat Jacqueline. I didn't treat some of these girls, uh, with that respect of being faithful. I think in the relationship, like I was not, you know, as far as like abuse claims, like I, I was, I don't think I was ever abusive, but I did definitely was not loyal. And that's just like, so yeah, I don't deserve, you know, a loyal person back. Um, but looking forward, like, you know, cause this is still my life and I'm still relatively young. Um, like, will I ever be able to date again? And that's like a real question that like, maybe not like legitimately. So you've always been the person to cheat on the person. You've never been at the no, I've receiving been, end. I've been, I've been cheated on. <laughs> No, okay it. okay so if you realize how fucking bad it is to be cheated I know. on it fucking sucks dude it's the worst i like it, and, and that brings me back like i try and like justify it in my head but i know it's super fucked and it's just like 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 when i got cheated on yeah it felt like the world was ending and i was in my 20s so it's not that long um it's just like like I said, when I get into these relationships, I always feel like I have one foot out the door because when you're supposed to be in a relationship, you're supposed to be fully committed to them. You're, you know, like you date, like you understand where it's like when you're, when you decide to commit to somebody, like you need to like, be not even like, not even completely like sexually, but just as a whole, like you are committed to them. And I just, I haven't found that in over a decade. Um, so every time I get involved with people, it's like not... I just, I don't feel that. And it ends up, you know, coming out in horrendous ways. It's like, you know, I, I get it. I get where you're coming from, but it's just like, you end up looking really stupid. I know. Okay. I'm not, I know. Like, I'm not under, I, I see a lot of people say like I'm like smug and I think that I'm like better and I'm like dude I like I'm under no illusion that like I am like not not deserving of any of this and I've like fucked up and I like continue to 
I mean, I don't know. I think the, the Jacqueline one was definitely much more cute, but, um, you know, I've tried, but it doesn't look like that, obviously, to this, but I have, and I know I have. It's what people are, are, are seeing, you know? Well, people and, like and... to see all the shit, you know? Like, obviously, if you make a video about this, the primary thing is going to be me being straight up, be like, yeah, I was sneaky, you know, like that's going to be the because that that's the juiciest part um and i get that but at the same time people won't acknowledge that like i have made strides and one i haven't dated anyone since then because of this i've made my i've scrubbed my channel clean of that because i know my audience was just tired and it's not like i'm just constantly this shitty person in the shadows i laid off for a long time of just like all right well i just need to work music and stuff and the fact that this three month relationship is now coming to uh, do damage. It's like, well, this it's been two years and now here we are again. And I decided to do this and I guess I'm reaping the rewards of that. Um, but I did consciously spend a lot of time on music and not dating people and doing all that. But people don't want to see that. Paul, partially because I'm irrelevant now too. You know, like people, everyone just kind of left. Um, partially because of the scandal but then things got fine again but then things in the past year have gotten shitty again because it's just youtube and that's just the belly of the beast it's just that you know you 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 realize these things have happened and and you realize they're bad and you know you're saying you're gonna do better you know i i think honestly like genuinely if you were just going around hoeing about you know, it, it would be less of an issue than you getting in a relationship and then, you know, something happening publicly after because that that's the issue, you know? And, and it's like, I understand people get riled up, people get sucked into the gossip, you know? But it, it's not like people, like when it comes to them, they're like, now I'm watching this, you know? But if you're making content they're not gonna just be like, man, I can't wait for the next time that social repose, like, fucks up, you know, because you're not yeah, that it's very, person. It's very, it's very spicy when they do, you know? Uh, and you're right. Well, I, I just cut you off. No, no, it's fine. But, what it, you, you know, and it's like, people are starting to get annoyed because stuff keeps happening. And, and that's really kind of the point I'm trying to hammer home is like obviously work on yourself off of the channel you know it doesn't need to be like a thing that's shared with people but y people's perception is is gonna change if you show it through your actions you know if you keep doing the same thing and the same thing keeps coming out that that's when it looks stupid you know and you look goofy but if you know, at some point you find someone, you're like, this is the person, I'm, I'm gonna be monogamous, and then, like, the relationship just ends, you know, but there's no drama, there's no cheating, you know, even if that is the case, you know, that's a step forward, and, and it's like, you're not gonna end up with people that are quite reasonably annoyed, because you're not making dumb decisions, you know? Yeah, but but also understand like what I just said before. It's been two years since anything has happened. That's a long time. And I mean, I've only been I've only been doing this for four or five, about four and a half. It's like two thousand late two thousand fifteen, two thousand sixteen. Um, you know, so the scandal thing happened, but it's like since then, yeah, no, I did make conscious efforts and. You know, I mean, I, I mean, obviously this thing happens. So it's like, all right, well, it's very easy to look at this and be like, oh, well, he never changed one bit. And it's just like, well, I didn't do anything in that period of time that was bad. And then this comes up. It's so, like, I, I understand where you're coming. It's just, I think that there was an effort. It's just overshadowed by this. Well, depending... On what happens going forward, um, depending on who I interview after this, um, who knows, um, personally, uh, just, 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 just be loyal, just do it, just, 
I, I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it. Right, you know, dude, I, I get it. after this seeing pro Jared's cock like 40 times. Funeral, man. <laughs> it's like, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, it, it's just like, it makes me so sad because, like, I was doing so fucking good and the views dried up. Uh, the money has dried up, but I have a savings. So I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to be an artist. I'm just going to do this shit and I'm going to be good. And then I and then I take this girl on tour and it's just like, and then it's it's just fucking it's not like a relapse but it's just like dude God we're we're back we're back we're back we're back there now we're back and it's just like, fuck, you know, I don't know man it it just it's very frustrating and I know it's self induced and everyone's like well then just don't do it and get better I'm doing it and now. I got involved with this girl and it happened and I, I would say it wasn't as malevolent as the Jacqueline thing. Absolutely not. Um, and I did my best to like, not have something like this happen, but you know, it is hindsight's 2020. Okay. Well now I don't think I have any more questions. Um, you know, we've, we've gone over, uh, yeah, the main points from the post that, really. that I wanted to hear from you. Um, so I, I do appreciate you coming and putting yourself in the hot seat um, to talk to me. I, I appreciate that. Um, it's more than some other people do when I cover them in a video. Uh, so I, I, I will admit I respect that. Um, I have opinions. Uh that I'm kind of holding oh, on I to know, for right I know, now. I know, I know, I know you don't like me very much, and that's fine. I, 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 I don't, I don't mind. You know, I don't turn I off. Mind. No, I, I, I under, I, I understand. I understand the grind. It's just like I'm so tired. <laughs> I'm just tired. Like, let, let, let me make it clear. I, I don't like turn on the camera and do a video on on most people i think the only one that i can genuinely say i hate with a passion is onision you know it, right. it's like i don't i don't want to be in the business of ending careers you know because i understand youtube's fucking a pain in the ass and there are a lot of creators who struggle, you know, and even the ones like that, like a Jake Paul, you know, like who who knows what he, he goes through, you know. So it's like there are much more dangerous things that are putting YouTube and things like the Internet at risk. And there, there are different like stories I want to tell as a creator. Yeah. You know? It's like I'm, I'm not in it to, you know, fuck you over, you know, obviously, you know, I'm going to be critical i'm gonna look at what information is going on but it, it, it's not to you know spite you or anything like that like i don't i don't go to bed i'm like oh, fuck it fuck social no, posts I, I know. you know that, that's why that's why i'm only talking the last video i was like oh i did homework like actually i mean it was still mean but it was like you know all right of all the shit i was like this is like the least shit um you know but as far as this goes it's like the reason why i'm being so i guess just open to you about this is mainly it's just like my content is now music i don't share my personal life anymore and even though this happened it's like it's it's now turning into this thing where like i'm super abusive to my fans and i did this and i did that and it's all coming from the mouth of this one person and now the fans are starting to get riled up because she's very persuasive and it's just like well, uh, I don't know. I, I just, it's just, it feels different. Well, I just want to tell you that, you know, that's, that's not what I'm doing here. You know, I don't do that here. Um, that's not... I just, I just like, I know if you do make a video on this, it's going to be centered, uh, me not being loyal and me not learning my lesson and me being, uh, you know, stupid. <laughs> I don't want to see creators be goofy. We are uh, in a great position. I'm in a great position. We as like all of YouTube. <laughs> oh, you know. Yeah. Well, but that that's like, and and like I'll I, I don't want to take up more. It's like been an hour, but it's like the reason why the Jacqueline thing 
made so much sense as far as like me, my YouTube getting like fucking buried. It's because I made so much relationship content and she became a person on the channel. Like she was practically a co, you know, channel person for like you know, six months to a year. Um, so to have that fall apart in such a malicious way, uh, I get it. Whereas this one is, yeah, I mean, the relationship didn't end well and, you know, it was much more brief, but it's like, it has nothing to do with the channel. I, I, I'm just saying, you know. Oh, I, just, know, I, know, I know what you're saying. Stop being goofy. Know, I know. Just, yeah. just, it, it's, I know, I know maybe it's easier said than done, but it, 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 it's like, like I said, this, if you went home and around, I don't think there'd be like that much of an issue. <laughs> I was for two years. <laughs> there were no issues. <laughs> Oh wait, no, there there were, but it wasn't like I never committed to any. So it's like if someone gets mad, it's just like, okay, that sucks. But you, like, you draw your line in the sand. Well, now I got a lot of information from you. I gotta check up on it with it with other people and really kind of come to my own conclusions. Um, moving far away from here, I'm I'm very early into the research on this. I got into this like a day ago. Um, what made you decide to uh, to pursue it? Um, I don't even think I'm a hundred percent pursuing it yet. Um, I really need to hear from other all people. I've been hearing, I've been trying to because like people keep telling me like this person said this, this person said that, and I'm like I'm not interested in like. God, you know, like if it happens, it happens. If you want to do this, like obviously I can't. You know, it's your prerogative. It's just, um, yeah, I'm just tired of the he said, she said stuff. Well, you know, I, I I'm looking to find out what is really the story here. You know, um, it, it's like my prerogative for doing this is really just. I think part of it is that it, it it annoys me when I see creators do things that make the platform look bad, which is why I went really hard on the last video. Uh, I think if well, I do this, deserving. if I do this next video, it, it would be more historical in context. I think in terms of you well, it has as a creator, to, be in order to make sense, you know. But... Uh, it, I, I know it's like a tricky thing it's just like I understand the cheating angle um, you know I've been really trying like anyone that asks I'm just like well it was found I mean yeah it was not great but it all, I also did try and do the open relationship thing and that worked for a minute until it didn't but it's like it's not a hard it wasn't a hardcore monogamy thing not but pa past that the thing that I'm honestly most worried about um when I heard that you were possibly jumping on this, this is the the fan stuff and saying that I manipulated people and saying that I took people's money and underpaid people and was just a shitty person by scenes when I know that I have not been. I'll need to talk to other people to corroborate that story, of course. And I understand other people are going to be, you know, emotional. And I understand, like, you know, you obviously you want to defend yourself and, and that's perfectly fine. I think... Uh, a lot of what we've seen this past year on YouTube is people being put on blast then coming back and like defending themselves post post canceling um, you know I'm trying to offer up a more comprehensive uh, point really that's re that's really what I'm trying to do uh, yeah I mean I just I even if you make something on this, like, I'm not interested in making any content. You know, that's why I reach out. Instead of just doing a counter video and just straight up and being like, yo, uh, this is about to happen, so here's my say. I, I don't want that. So I'd rather, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh, trust me. If you made a response video, I would I make a response. <laughs> you know, I don't 
like, I'm not going to say I don't care, because obviously I do care. This is like, you know, this is my life. Um, even, you know, people are met, like, I don't, even if it was damning, I don't think this will sink me just because, like I said, most of revenue, yeah, as far as a business standpoint, most of my revenue is from song streams and cover streams. And I'm pretty sure those people don't give a shit about who or what I am. Um, it makes me really sad that I've lost my core circle over this. Um, that's already happened, you know, like, I don't think she can really take much more in that regard. Um, you know, so I've already lost that. So I don't know what else I can lose in that regard as far as fans, because the rest are just casual people, you know, they watch sometimes. It's kind of, I mean, you know how it is. Yeah. Okay. Now, now I'm done. I'm done with questions. Everything's done. All right. All right. All right. I, I do appreciate you coming out and doing this i that i do appreciate uh i got a lot of stuff that i need to think about and corroborate i don't know what i'm gonna do with this full thing it might go on a second channel um i'll tell you when i stop recording um but uh just in case if i do put this whole thing up uh this will probably go on my second channel so oh, it's like a there podcast. you go at this right now it is okay this thing has been an hour 14 minutes of us hey, uh man. here Hey man, I resonate with you, all right? I feel I feel like I'd be friends with you if I wasn't such a shitty YouTuber. You know, I, I want to see you do better. You know, I, yeah. I don't I don't fucking you know what what you do in your personal life, fine, but it's just like I, I want to see creators do better. I, I want that more often than not. You know, it's very rare that I'm like that's it. Pack it up. This guy's got to go from the platform. Like done. He's done. Like I don't want him well, here. I'm you know, like an Austin Jones. I agree with you. Yeah, so it, it's like, you know, Richie, I, I do. I want to see you do better, but, like, I got to look at the other information going right now, you know, and seeing what's up. But, uh, yeah, no, thank you. All right.